The Great Barrier Reef is a huge and complex place, you know, stretches along 2,300 kilometres of the Queensland coast and there's at least 35 major rivers that discharge water into the Great Barrier Reef. The work that the reef scientists have done over the last decade has shown us that the sediments, nutrients and pesticides coming from grazing and cropping land is what's causing the major impact to the health of the reef. E-Reefs is a project that attempts to combine a whole hierarchy of models to model the impacts of land runoff through rivers, down through estuaries and out into the marine environment to try to pick up changes in reef health associated to changes with land use practice. Governments, regional bodies and industries are already working closely together. However, through E-Reefs we're able to actually build a better platform for integrating those models so that we can understand from the terrestrial, from the catchment side, through the estuaries and then out to the reef one integrated modelling tool. One of the challenges with water quality is that it's quite hard as a land manager to know that the actions you do today actually have a benefit to reef health in 20, 25, 30 years time. When you're trying to understand where a particular farmer that farms in a catchment, where is his footprint on the Great Barrier Reef, we can use these models to understand which particular catchments are impacting which marine regions. So we can then take that back and work with the farmers and show them why they've got to minimise the excess fertilisers and pesticides coming off cropping land and the excess sediments coming off the grazing lands. We see phase one of E-Reefs having been quite successful in starting the process, developing the building blocks. But even in these first 18 months, we've delivered hydrodynamic models that give a three-dimensional description of river plumes and currents and temperature on the Great Barrier Reef. The second phase of e-reefs is going to be crucial to bring in those related issues on water quality, the transport of sediments and nutrients, because those are the areas where the impacts happen in the reef. We need to move from traditional research products, which have a fairly narrow application, to um, a set of systems that provide operational information in near real time. We're monitoring and, and operating these models to a very high level of um, performance and reliability. We run ocean models that map the uh, currents and the sea surface temperatures all around Australia and the hydrodynamic e-reefs model is really a specialisation of that sort of service and it'll be in fact what we call nested within our current models. The groundbreaking work that's been done here will be able to be taken and utilised in various ways around the world but if we can achieve it for the Great Barrier Reef, that'll be a huge success. One of the greatest innovations of the E-Reefs project is the ambition to model the whole Great Barrier Reef. It's, it's an immensely large and challenging region and it's never been modelled as one unit before. There's significant investment into this project, but that's because there's significant value in the Great Barrier Reef. So we need to do everything we possibly can to protect that reef and also to ensure that the catchments remain in good health.